What's going on YouTube? My name is Zach with Android Digest and I've got a very special review for you today because we are reviewing the Lenovo Chromebook Duet and this is the 13 inch version that just came out recently. And a lot of you remember the old Lenovo Chromebook Duet, the 10 inch model. It was very portable and light, but it had that cool detachable keyboard. Well, we have a very similar device in this, but it's also much larger with a full sized keyboard. So I'm excited to give you my thoughts on it and to give you a full review you today. So with all that being said, let's get straight into it and let's get it going. All right, so I've got this here. It's 13 inches of a tablet. It runs Chrome OS, but on the other end, it has this full size keyboard. Now I wanna say right off the bat, if you've been waiting for a detachable tablet with a full size keyboard that feels just like a laptop, this is going to be very, very appealing to you because you have this keyboard right here and I'm just gonna start off this review by saying, this is one of the best keyboards I've used on any detachable tablet. That is one reason why this is such an exciting device to review because we finally have a device with a full screen. It's also very lightweight. This tablet feels very, very light. And you have this nice kickstand, which is also very light, but you still have a full 13 inch screen. And we haven't seen really anything like this really in quite a while. I mean, the last device similar to this was the Pixel Slate and it was very, very heavy. This is a really fun device to review. So I wanna review it here and give you my honest thoughts, but let's jump right into it and look at the design. So if we look at this here, we have two speakers here, a USB-C port, and we have this right here, which is the power button. On the other side, you see two speakers and another USB-C port, and you just see a volume rocker up and down on the volume here at the top. And of course, it detaches the keyboard on the bottom of the device. So when we look at the design of the tablet, it's really nice. The speakers are not as good as I would have hoped. They're not quite as good. They're decent, but not great, and that's really my opinion of these speakers. But I'm really glad that you could actually charge this device from both sides on the USB-C ports. That's a really big bonus. Now, if we look at the back of the tablet, you're gonna see the color here, and you will notice right here some fingerprints. It can get some fingerprints or some grease and stuff stuck to it. That's pretty normal for this, but you do have a really nice design. I like the color of it. It's very similar, again, to that old Lenovo Chromebook Duet. And if you see this, this is the kickstand case that magnetizes to the back and you're gonna notice that it's very lightweight. It's even lighter than the previous Chromebook Duet and it's very, very thin, so that's awesome. And it has quite a few angles on it. So I really like this better than even the Asus CM3 kickstand. I know that one can go in portrait mode, but this one can also go further back. So you get so many different viewing angles with it. So I really love it and the fabric has a really cool texture to it. It's very, very nice and I don't think the fabric is going to wear down. It's really, really difficult to get this fabric to wear down just based off of how it's designed. Now, one of the negatives is the fabric over here. This is the fabric for the keyboard. And on the last Chromebook Duet, it was almost like a plastic on the bottom. And I actually sort of liked that because I really don't like the idea of getting this dirty because it is more difficult to clean than a traditional plastic or a aluminum or anything like that. You're going to have to either set it on this fabric or this fabric. And there's not really much of an in-between. Now, if you were wondering, you have this right here. It looks like this is a place for the stylus, but my device did not come with a stylus or a stylus holder or anything like that. So if you do buy the model from Best Buy, I would not expect a stylus in the box. Now, if we look at the competition for this, it's very interesting and it's very difficult to judge because a lot of these tablets just fly on sale. And if you compare the design of this, for example, to the HP Chromebook X2, it gets very interesting because this does not have a fingerprint reader. That is not a part of the design, but the HP Chromebook X2, it does have a fingerprint reader. It's the new 11 inch model that came out very recently, but that device retails at like 600 bucks, but it's also went on sale for around 400. And that has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 7C. It's the first gen. This has the second gen, and it's really weird. They've been advertising it as a first gen, but everything that I've been reading also says it's a second gen. So it's a little 
bit of weird information, so keep that in mind. Even I can't be 100% sure. But either way, there's not a huge difference between those processors. But the reason why I bring up this comparison is because a lot of you might be considering what detachable tablet should I get? And if you're not wanting to spend 200 bucks, maybe you're wanting something around four or $500. And you might be looking at that HP Chromebook X2. And that is one thing you need to think about is that device because it does have a fingerprint sensor. But the real big differentiator between that device and this device is really gonna be, again, this keyboard. So on that HP Chromebook X2, I was accidentally clicking the trackpad all the time. If I simply rested my palms on the trackpad, it would accidentally click it, especially when it was on my lap. It didn't really do it on a desk. Well, this does not have that issue. Now, you might be able to accidentally click it if you really play with the bottom of this or something, but overall, I did not have that issue whatsoever on this device, and the keyboard itself is so much better than any detachable I've had outside of the Surface Pros. Now, the Surface Pros, they magnetically attach to the device, so you get a little bit of a better angle. This does not. You see here, there's no magnetic attachments here, but on the other end, this works really good on my lap. It was actually very comfortable typing on my lap, and the keyboard has a lot of travel. This is by far my favorite detachable tablet keyboard that I've really had ever since I've started using Chrome OS. You're not getting this because it's the powerhouse of Chrome OS, because it's the fastest processor in the world. You're getting it because you want the convenience of using a tablet quite a bit of the time, but maybe you wanna get some work done. And this is actually really, really good for getting work done. Now, the trackpad is a little bit iffy. I don't love it. It is a little bit flimsy. If I'm using it on my lap, where I don't have like a lot of support there, it just feels a little bit off, I guess you could say. Now, I'm not getting any double clicks on mine personally, but I'm telling you it is a little bit nicer to use with some extra support like on a desk. It's definitely not a glass trackpad, but it is serviceable. So in a lot of ways, it does remind me of the trackpad on the Chromebook Duet. It is just a little bit bigger, and I'm talking about the 10-inch model, right? This is very similar to that, but you do get a bigger trackpad. Now, if we move on to performance, you're going to see, well, this device is pretty darn good. It's got a Qualcomm Snapdragon 7C. It is the second gen. Now, I'm reviewing the model with eight gigabytes of RAM from Best Buy. There are some models out there with like 256 gigs of storage, but some of those models only come with like four gigabytes of RAM, right? So there's a lot of variations of this device, and they're normally priced between $400 and $500. This is a 1080p screen. This is not a 2K resolution. So that HP Chromebook X2, it has a 2K resolution, which is great, but that may affect performance ever so slightly because it's got to push all those pixels around and everything like that. So on my model here, I didn't notice a ton of lag. I will say it's not going to be as good as an i3. It's not even going to be as good as the old Pixel Slate that had an M3. But on the other end, performance is still pretty darn good for me. If I'm using this with multiple tabs open, five, 10 tabs open, I'm not really experiencing much slowdown. It's more just waiting a second or two for a website to load, but I wasn't really experiencing any significant lag. Gestures, when you're using this as a tablet, it is very smooth. Performance is good, relatively speaking. It's much better than the old Chromebook Duet. It's much, much, much better than that Chromebook Duet. It's much better than the Asus CM3, and this is about equal. I'd say it's a little bit better in performance than the HP Chromebook X2. So it is a close battle, but overall, remember, you're not paying paying for this device to have the best performance. You're paying for this device for two reasons. Again, one, you want an amazing device for tablet stuff and for entertainment, but you also want to use this device on the go. So when we look at the display of this device and we really look at that factor, that's gonna be a major selling point because this has an OLED screen. It's a 1080p screen, right? 1920 by 1080. It's a 16 by nine aspect ratio. Some of you are not gonna like that, but man, that aspect ratio is good on this 13 and screen in my opinion. It's great for entertainment purposes. This screen does have 400 nits of brightness, so it does get plenty bright enough. It is only 60 hertz on the refresh rate, so it's not quite as good as the Tab S7 or the Tab S7 Plus as far as the refresh rate. But overall, this display is pretty darn amazing. So when you think about this device, and I really, really wanna harp on this here because you have to ask yourself as a consumer, why would I buy this device? If you're primarily looking for a good laptop and you just wanna find the best
best laptop on the market. This is not a laptop. Now you can use it as a laptop, but this is for someone who wants to use their device, not primarily as a laptop, but as a laptop and a tablet. This isn't the fastest device for $500, no, or even $400 if and when it goes on sale. I'm sure it will eventually. It doesn't have the best keyboard of any Chromebook for that price, no. What this device does and what it's really, really good at is doing two things good. So it's not the best tablet, no. I'd say the Tab S7 or the Tab S7 Plus, they are gonna be better tablets for you overall. And is this the best laptop? I would also say, no, it's not the best laptop. But it's so good at both things. And if you're one of those people that doesn't want to spend money on both, but you want to get a little bit of both worlds, this is an amazing device for that. Because you get a 400 nit screen, you get an OLED screen, it looks very, very good. And you get to watch entertainment. It looks amazing on this 16 by nine screen. I think it does look phenomenal, right? But it's also fast enough to go on the web to do productivity stuff. When I open up Google Docs, and I'm typing out documents, it does a great job with all of that too. Now, if you want to do some gaming on it, hey, you can game on this just like you would an Android tablet. If you want to do budget work, you could do budget work and Chrome OS is great for that. You could also use the virtual desks, which I love on Chrome OS. Chrome OS also works great with your phone so you could get your text messages and you could also use your phone as a hotspot very, very easily through that connection that you get in this operating system. So if you're someone who doesn't need a bunch of fancy Windows programs and all you really need to use is a web browser and some Android apps, this is going to be one of the best devices you could get to do both productivity work and tablet work. It won't be as fast as a normal laptop at this price range, but you'll also get a better screen because it is great at tablet work, right? But again, it won't be quite as good of a tablet because it won't, for example, have that 120 hertz screen. And I'll admit, Chrome OS can be a little bit buggy. So one thing you'll notice is the gestures. Now they are very smooth, everything seemed great for that, but there's these weird keyboard issues I'm having. And I even had these issues all the way back on the Google Pixel Slate. So if I go to Twitter and I go to reply to a tweet, and I go to reply and I start using the touchscreen keyboard, I'll notice that every time I press the space bar, the keyboard will blink. Now just one or two updates ago, before the update that I'm on today, I was having issues where it was back spacing whenever I would press the space bar. So it was bringing two words together and smashing them together for no reason at all. Again, that was on Twitter, that was on Reddit. For some reason, it was only happening on certain websites. So these issues that Chrome OS has been having, it's just really, really weird. I've also had weird bugs whenever I was using the touchscreen keyboard in Google Docs. And if you try to use the Gboard app, which is supposed to work now with Chrome OS, and you try to use it, let's say, to go to your web address and you start to try to type in a new web address in the address bar, it will start smushing words together for no reason. Like it will take words from your autocomplete and just smush them together. Realistically, most of these bugs, you really don't have to worry about. I mean, the only bug that you may notice if you just use the normal keyboard and you just use it day to day like normal, you might have the keyboard just blink at you whenever you press the space bar. Outside of that, if you don't use the Gboard app, I don't think you're gonna see a lot of bugs and I think they will work some of these things out with software updates. And this device is going to get like eight years of software updates, right? So that's an amazing thing. But I don't think we should have to wait on that. I mean, that's just something that's annoying. So no, I don't think most of you are going to have a bad experience with the software, but it's not quite as good as the experience that you would have on Android. So if you're someone out there who is comparing this to the Chrome OS landscape right now, and if you're wondering if you should buy this, you have to always remember that it does depend. The HP Chromebook X2, it's been on sale around $400 and it does have a fingerprint sensor. It's also smaller. So if some of you want a smaller Chromebook, that's a good option for you. But the keyboard felt almost unusable on my lap. So if I was using it particularly on my lap, that was not a good option for me. But if you don't care about the keyboard, if you're gonna buy a Bluetooth keyboard anyway, and you want a tablet that's pretty darn good, hey, that might be a better option for you. But realistically, I do expect this Lenovo to go on sale over time as well. And if I'm trying to give you a recommendation, I would say that even at $500, if you're the target consumer for this device, I really would recommend that you buy this. Yes, there's still some buggy software quirks off and on. And no, it's not as good of a tablet, again, as something like the S7, and it's not as good of a laptop as something like a Galaxy Chromebook. But when you factor in 
understand what this is. If you're a target consumer for this and you want a laptop, like you only have enough money to get something that's a laptop or a tablet, you can't buy both. And if you want something that's good at both, you only want one device to bring with you. This is a great device for that. Some of you don't care about Windows. You don't care about running Windows applications. You just want something that works good with Google Drive, Google Docs. You want something that's really good for the web and you want something that runs Android apps. This gives you all of those things. The keyboard is absolutely great. Again, this is one of the best keyboards I've ever seen on a detachable device, at least on the Chrome OS side. It also attaches with magnets, which was a huge issue last year with the Chromebook Duet. You could charge it from both sides. The battery life is amazing on this device. The screen is very, very good. And it's still fast enough to do some productivity work. I did not notice significant lag when I had three, four, five, six Chrome tabs open. And I didn't really notice a lot of lag even on the Android side. It's a phenomenal device. And I think a lot of people should consider it, especially as it gets some updates and especially going on in 2021 and beyond. Thank you all so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Feel free to give me a like and give me a sub. And also, hey, if you have a little bit of time, follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash digest Android, where I talk about all types of random Android things. And also check out some of my other videos. I focus a lot on budget tablets, tablets in the mid range, and I focus on Android tablets, Chromebook tablets, and also some phones as well. So feel free to check out some videos and I hope you all have a great day and I hope you enjoy your week.